Today, alhamdulillah, we have Surah Ma'arij. Uh, and Surah Ma'arij is a surah that was also revealed uh, in Makkah in the very, very early period. It was revealed because of a challenge from a man by the name of Anadar bin Al Harith. Uh, and he came to Rasulullah and said, What does the Quran say? So the Prophet told him what the Quran said. Then he said, You know what? And then he actually looked up at the sky and he made a challenge to God, Audhu Billah. And he said, Oh Allah, if indeed this Quran is Haqq, and this Quran that, that this man is reciting to us is the truth, then punish us, destroy us right now by bringing down these rocks from the sky or bring upon us a terrible punishment from yourself. So, Yaqwati, this is what was said by, uh, by this man, another bin al Harith, and as a result of which, what actually happened was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse. It is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He does not respond to the arrogant people with the arrogance or with the challenge that they were asking for. What would have happened if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to destroy them? There would be no more Khalid bin Walid or Abu Sufyan or any of the Sahaba. There would be no more Quraysh, there would be no Kaaba, etc. Allah would have destroyed and leveled them totally. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He revealed this beautiful surah about the challenge that this man had, had brought out. Tayyip, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is the most merciful to all, uh, all of creation, the one who is specifically merciful uh, to human beings. Sa'ala sa'ilum bi adabin waqi'. The questioner has asked about the adab, the punishment that is waqi' that will most definitely take place. Which question are they talking about? Another bin al Harith, right? Lil kafirina laysa lahu dafi'. For those who are disbelievers, there is nothing that can prevent them from it. From those who die upon disbelief, nothing in this dunya or the akhirah, nothing in existence can prevent you from the adab. In fact, this is how Allah is telling us to respond to those people who also make the same, same comment. So you might be at your work or you might be at your place where you're giving da'wah to some people and an unfortunate non-Muslim makes a comment to you and says, if this is true, then tell your God to punish me right now. How should you respond when someone says like that? Respond in the same way. Recite this surah to them. Sa'ala sa'ilum bi'adabin waqi' lil kafirina laysa lahu dafi' In fact, one of the most beautiful things I have not noticed is that Whatever people ask you, you can always give them a verse of the Quran. Min Allahi dil ma'arij. From Allah, the one to whom everything ascends. So what rises up to Allah Azawajal? Angels rise up to Allah Azawajal. Good deeds rise up to Allah Azawajal. Also, what else rose up to Allah? Isa alayhi wa salam rose up to Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those things that rise up, and that is the angels. Ta'aruju al-mala'ikatu wa ruhu ilayhi fi yawmin. So the malaika rise up, war ruh. Ruh meaning Jibreel is called the ruh. But isn't he a malaika? So why is it being specified, even though malaika is mentioned first and then Jibreel is being specified? Why? Just to glorify Jibreel, just to honor Jibreel, just to show how great Jibreel is. Ilayhi to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi yawmin kana miqdaruhu khamsina alfasana. In a day in which the duration is 50,000 years. What does that mean? That Allah is referring to the day of judgment. It is 50,000 years. Allahu Akbar. The authentic hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa explain that the 50,000 years is not even the judgment yet. It is us waiting for the judgment to start. Fasbir sabaran jamila. So Allah orders His Prophet and orders His believers. Us all. Be patient, O Muslimin. Sabran Jamila, a beautiful patience. Sabran Jamil means that you should have patience just like the prophets of God had patience. Like Nuh had patience. 950 years he had patience. Like, for example, Yaqub uh, had patience. Even though his children, his child was lost and taken away, he had patience. And be patient just like. The greatest of the prophets had patience. Innahum yarawnahu ba'ida. They see it far away. 
meaning they see the judgment far away. They're too impatient. They ask for the reward, Jannah right now or Jahannam right now. They're asking for it right now. Innahum yarawnahu ba'ida. So they're saying it's too far away, Allah. Bring it close. Make it now. Wanarahu qariba. But be patient, for indeed it is soon. I see it as very, very soon. Yawma takunu samauk al muhl. On that day when the sky will look like molten brass. And the scholars described it to me that because the sun will be so close, in one authentic narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that the sun will be about one meal above our heads. Meal in the Arabic word can mean two things. It can mean one mile, or meal also means a comb, a hair comb, a hair brush. Because of this, the sky will be like molten brass, meaning it will be like liquid. And the mountains will be like a wet cotton. Meaning that the mountains have been pounded against each other so much that it's become like clay now. You can basically take the mountain and you can mold it as you wish. It's become that soft. On that day, no beloved will ask about his beloved. So who is beloved to you? Your wife, your husband, your children. On that day, you will not ask about them at all. Allah says in the very next verse, يُبَصَّرُونَهُمْ They will be able to see them. Meaning you'll be able to see your wife, you'll be able to see your children, you'll be able to see your husband, you'll be able to see your beloved brother or sister in this dunya. However, يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ The mujrim wishes, just wishes, لَوْ يَفْتَدِي If only he could sacrifice مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ إِذِنْ بِبَنِي if only he could sacrifice on that day the punishment of Allah by sacrificing his bani, his child. Me, I'm grabbing my son and saying, take my son instead of me. Ya salam. And if not his child, then wasahibatihi wa akhi and his wife. So he'll put his wife, take my wife, not me. <laughs> take my akhi, my brother, not me. Wa fasilatihi lati tu'i, his offsprings and his close mates that he always goes back to and that he has a strong friendship with and not just that he would rather sacrifice all of the people of this world if he could he would sacrifice everyone else and just for himself to be saved yes Allah he says in verse 15 kalla nay innaha lada the fire that removes top of the head. It calls out, Ya Fir'aun, where are you? So the, uh, the fire will be calling out people's names as a further mockery, as a further fear. Adbara means he turned aside, he turned his back, وَتَوَلَّى and went away. Meaning, turned away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa jama'a fa awa'a. Jama'a meaning, and he got all his wealth together and he hoarded it. Meaning he never gave anything away for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never gave zakat, never gave charity, never fed a poor person, never ever did that. Inna al-insana khuliqa halu'a. Verily mankind was created halu. Mankind is always striving for good for himself. Another meaning of halu means he is very, very hasty and always striving for khair for himself. When evil strikes him, then he is despondent and he is distressed. But when good touches him, then he is manu'a. He is withholding and he stops. What is Allah saying about, telling us here? Meaning one of the reasons why we enter Jahannam, or why insan will enter Jahannam, is because our nature is that we are too hasty. We look for easy gains, quick gains right now. That's why we go for pleasures, sins. It's only a quick pleasure. Then what comes after it is distress and, and disaster. And when good strikes him, he doesn't share it. He doesn't thank Allah, nor does he share the khair with others. He doesn't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except illa al-musalleen. They are different people. The musalleen are different people. We're not going to be hasty. We're going to be thankful to Allah. We're not going to hold our wealth. We're going to give it away. And we're going to be different types of people. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell you about those characteristics that will save you from this terrible Jahannam. 
اللَّذِينَهُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ Those who are constant upon their prayers means regularity, meaning praise at their earliest times and with the highest of concentration and with the best levels of khushu and always struggling to pray in the first row and always in jama'ah if, if possible. Right after this verse, Allah is going to talk about other deeds that are also important that will save you from Jahannam. But at the end, He will also go back to Salah again, meaning Allah will mention Salah twice. By mentioning Salah at the beginning and Salah at the end, shows that therefore if you don't have Salah, all these other deeds are useless. وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ مَعْلُومٌ And those who have فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ in their wealth حَقٌّ مَعْلُومٌ A well-known حق Meaning that they know that when they earn wealth, that this wealth does not totally just belong to them. It belongs to someone else. لِسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ For those who ask and those who are close in relationship, in blood relationship. Uh, our wives unfortunately sometimes make it a, a matter of argument with us. Why are you sending your family so much money? Well, recite this verse to them. وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ مَعْلُونَ لِسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ They know that there is a haqq of their family on their wealth. So you can't, you can't argue with me why I'm sending money back to my mom. And don't argue with me why I'm giving poor people money, etc. They have a haqq on my wealth as well. وَالَّذِينَ يُصَدِّقُونَ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ And those who testify to the truthfulness of the Day of Judgment. So this verse is referring to those who seek knowledge, the tulab al-ilm and the scholars of knowledge. So right after salah, Allah mentions zakat. Right after zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions knowledge. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ And those who truly fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ عَذَابَ رَبِّهِمْ غَيْرُ مَأْمُونَ Verily, the punishment of Allah, there is no guarantee of safety from the punishment of Allah. That's what Allah is saying. So for me, no guarantee of safety. For you, no guarantee of safety. Just because you're fasting today, don't ever think it. Wallahi, you could have done the ibadah your whole life. They come on the last day of your death, no guarantee of safety or punishment at all. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ And those who got their private parts. Sisters in Islam, hijab, very critical for every one of you. And the hijab is not just a hijab that is worn. A hijab is a way of life. It includes the dress. It includes the way you speak. It includes the way you behave. It includes where you sit. It includes how you interact with males. It includes where you study and how you study. Hijab is a way of life. It is not only a dress. So, ikhwati, to protect your private parts, meaning to cover your aura, meaning to stop anything that will lead to illegal sexual intercourse. So not even the phone calls, not even the blinking messages, not even the flirting, not even the second looks, not even the gazing, not even the desires of the heart, anything that will lead to it. Illa ala azwajihim, except from their wives. Auma malakat aymanuhum, meaning what their right hands possess. Fa innahum ghayru malumin. If they were to do that, then they are not sinful, they are not to be blamed if they were to, to quell the hunger of their of their body. Famani bitaga wara adalika. Whoever wishes anything other than that, فَإِنَّ هُمْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ Then they are the ones who transgress the limits. Those who go into pornography, those who go into masturbation, those who go into any other way to quell your desire, except through these ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ And those who are always looking after ra'un, meaning always fulfilling, their amana, the trust that Allah has put upon you, and the ah meaning the contract that, that people have done with you, which is based upon a mutual understanding and a mutual faith. So if someone has entrusted you with something, you must fulfill it. And if someone if you have made a promise to someone, you must fulfill it. You made a contract to someone, you must fulfill it. Walladinahum bi shahadatihim qa'imun and those who are upright with their witnesses, meaning whenever they witness, the witness to the truth. They never ever witness to falsehood. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ Again, Allah goes back to salah. And those who are upright about their salah. أُولَٰئِكَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ مُكْرَمُونَ They are 
going to be saved from Jahannam and they're going to be in Jannah Mukramun, meaning they will have a lot of nobility. So what is wrong with the disbelievers? That towards you, they are muhti'een. Meaning that Muhammad Sallallahu is here, so the disbelievers look at you and say, no, no, let's go away. This is just a madman here who's talking. Anil yamini wa anil shimali azim. They are in groups to your right and to your left. And they're running, running away, and they're walking away very, very quickly. What is wrong with them? Ayatu ma'u kullu mri'im minhum ayyud khala jannata na'im. Do they have a guarantee that they will be entering the blessed Jannah, do they have a promise from Allah, a guarantee from Allah that they will not be punished in Jahannam and enter Jannah? Kalla, no, of course they don't. They have no guarantee and no, no guarantee at all that they will ever enter Jannah. Kalla, inna khalaqnahum mimma ya'lamun. Rather, of a surety they know from what we have created. Meaning, let not human beings forget where that they came from, which is from a, a clot of blood, which came from a despicable fluid that flew from the man. So I don't swear, meaning of a surety I do. Absolutely I swear by. I swear by the Lord of the East and the West. Verily we are most capable. What are we capable of? That we are able to, we're capable of, changing the khair that they have. وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُوقِينَ And we will not be overtaken in this cause. Meaning, we will not be superseded. No one will be able to supersede me. Meaning, ya akhwati, do not have a guarantee that the khair that Allah has given you will persist and last forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take it away at any point in time. فَذَرْهُمْ يَخُوضُوا وَيَلْعَبُوا So let them be waste time in vanity. وَيَلْعَبُوا And let them play around. حَتَّى يُلَاقُوا يَوْمَهُمُ الَّذِي يُعَدُونَ Until they meet that day which they have been promised. يَوْمَ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ The day when they will come out from the ajdath, meaning the graves. يَوْمَ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ سِرَاعًا We will come out, jump out as quickly as we can out of the graves. Why? Because this is the day that we've been waiting for. كَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ نُصُبِ يُفِضُونَ As if they are running towards a goal. As if they are running towards the Jannah that they feel that they are all going to be going to. Be going to. خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَارُهُمْ However, as soon as they come out of the graves, their faces will be filled with fear. تَرْحَقُهُمْ ذِلَّةً Their faces will be filled with, with, with disgrace. ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمُ الَّذِي كَانُوا That is the day that they